So this video is a follow-up to my first video on the Young Hang compressor. Uh, first impressions, excellent compressor, um, well-built, functioning well. Uh, but I've been getting a lot of comments uh, regarding safety, water in the tank, uh, uh, how dangerous water in the tank can be, how dangerous water in your guns can be. And I agree, that is absolutely true. Uh, so what do we have to do to minimize that? Um, these compressors, no matter what you do, they're going to, high pressure uh, compressors, going to create uh, water from the heat buildup, condensation in the air. Um, even if you're in the desert or like right now, it's winter time here in New York. Uh, and the humidity is very, very low. Uh, so this part here where the air intake uh, comes into the first stage of being compressed has a little filter there, but that is not going to um, take water out of the system. Uh, even if you have dry, if you run it, it maybe with a, with a dehumidifier blowing on it, that might help. But, we, you know, so a lot of what has been going on or a lot of discussion has been around uh, these guys here. The, this is a, uh, now they call this an oil and water separator. At least they do on Alibaba. Now this particular oil and water separator, high pressure oil and water separator, is made with those cotton tampons. They really do not stop water uh, from getting into your tanks. Uh, it, it does hold it back. So you have a a first stage cotton tampon filter that's already built into the Young Hang. What I have done was to connect this right here, this tungsten gold, they call these, I guess, the gold filters, as a second stage. I just ran this for about 20 minutes um, to get this guy up to about uh, 4,000 PSI from 3,000, yeah, uh, uh, close to 4,000, um, just to see how it works. I did it twice and I examined the cotton filters in here. Now, what I'm finding is, and I'll show you this, the first cotton filter, as you can see here, let's see, let's knock this out, there we go, has picked up some oil on the inside and nothing on the other side. So, in closer examination, it is a little wet. Um, half of it, I would say half of it is wet, probably as it was lying down here, uh, that part picked up some moisture. But then, now this I already loosened, I don't keep it that loose. This is the Alibaba $70 water filter. Let's examine this. So here it is, here's a short one, and then a uh, longer one. Now, this has been used twice. It is completely dry. I mean, there's, there's just a little bit of, you know, kind of a little bit of a, an odor, an, an oil or rubber burning. I guess that could be the piston. But these are, this has been used twice. And I've checked it twice. It's dry. I leave it out to dry. And it seems to be holding back any moisture right at, for now. Um, I don't know how long these will last two 20 minute fills, maybe more, maybe three, maybe four. So for now, I'm gonna to continue to keep using uh, these cotton tampons in here. But what I plan to do, and this is something I've gotten some feedback on the first video, is possibly using two of these in here, okay, two short, cut this short, and putting some molecular sieve in between. And what I'll do is I'll probably put them in a uh, carbon fiber or PVC or some kind of plastic container uh, just to keep the molecular sieve from touching the side walls of the aluminum. Again, I don't know if this is fact. Uh, I've heard it. I'll, I'll abide by it. I think we sh all should if it helps us all be safe. Um, and I saw this on a hack on GTA uh, Gateway to Air Guns forum. I'll post a link uh, in the video so that you guys can see the hack. It's really cool. Guy took a piece of PVC pipe, filled it with molecular sieve, and put some rubber gaskets on the end, and pre you know it fills the whole thing, and he fills it. And that's the second stage. So you have the cotton on the first stage to catch you know, your grease, um, any, any kind of dirt that might come through. It doesn't catch water. And then the second stage, which would be this, 
will be the molecular sieve. And I think I'm going to do that so as well. what I'm going to show you now is how to turn uh, this $70 Alibaba gold uh, tampon, cotton tampon style uh, oil and water separator into an actual molecular sieve, uh, sort of like the Alpha, uh, where we're going to encapsulate the molecular sieve in a PVC pipe inside of this unit uh, with some O-rings on either end to seal it and create, you know, pack them nice and tight so they actually capture water. Uh, again, this is a, an economical way of creating a very good molecular sieve as you have seen on the link that I provided for the uh, GTA hack. Uh, another I, Again, I didn't come up with this. Uh, I'm just showing you how I think he did it. Uh, mine is pretty much the same way. I'm using the same one inch pipe. And it just so happens that one inch PVC pipe, now this is a pipe cutter, I have it ready to go. Um, I measured it and I'm gonna cut it in front of you. Uh, but what I did was we measured it and the one inch PVC pipe fits perfectly inside of here. Um, so that's going to be inside protecting the walls of the aluminum against any acid that might or could build up uh, from high pressure and heat and all of that. Uh, it'll be, the, the molecular sieve will be encapsulated inside of the PVC pipe, which will be inside of here. And that'll be sealed with two O-rings. Uh, let's see if you can see those. And there'll be one on either end. And then we'll cap it down so that all the molecular sieve stays nice and tight. And what we'll do is we will use these cotton tampons, just a little bit of it on the top to kind of press it in, just to make it easy. I capped one side off. This is a 12 inch ruler. It fits, I don't want to scratch the walls inside, so I'm gently placing it in. And it actually, it's about 12 inches, 12 and a quarter inches. So what I figured out, a little bit more, 12 and an eighth. Uh, the cap on the other end is five, yeah, I'm gonna say it's five eighths. So I'm gonna cut off uh, a half an inch because that'll make up the other eighth that was on the other end there. We're gonna make it 11 and a half inches and that's where I have it measured right now. Let's just make sure, yep, 11 and a half. So what I'll do is I'll cut this in front of you. This is a pipe cutter. Um, I use it for, so what you do is you tighten down on it, turn it, and there's a blade inside of here with two wheels. Give it a half, quarter turn, turn it. Gets harder as you uh, run through it. And I'm doing this just so we have a nice clean cut. I don't want to use, you can use a hacksaw. Um, or I don't know, whatever else you use to cut PVC pipe. Okay, so here we have an 11 and a half inch piece of PVC pipe, which fits right down in there, which then allows me to tighten this down. Now, it's gonna go all the way, and what we're gonna have is two O-rings. So there we go. I could feel it barely moving in there, so 11 and a half inches was a perfect cut. And what I'll do, let's open up both ends. So we will take an O-ring, put it on the inside, right on the edge of the PVC. And what we'll do is this side, we would put a little piece of cotton, we'll squeeze it in there, okay? This, let's just call this the bottom. Close this up. All right, whoa, nice tight fit, there we go. On the other end, all right, let's get this open. All right, so now what we would do, I don't have any molecular sieve because I just ordered it on Amazon, um, but here we have the PVC pipe inside. We're gonna fill that void with molecular sieve, pack it in there. Um, you can use a dowel, wooden dowel, you can use anything. Uh, just don't crack, you know, don't smash it. Just pack it tightly. Take our second, now we'd use another little piece of tampon that I'd squeeze in there. 
just like you saw on the video. There is another O-ring. Okay, and by the way, you can purchase O-rings from Harbor Freight, uh, whether online, if there's not one near you. These are dirt cheap, and they're pretty good. They're the nitrile uh, type O-rings. Uh, let me see. I'll use a bigger one. Oh yeah, that's, that's much nicer. So that O-ring is nice and big, pressing up against the PVC. Again, we'd have the molecular sieve in there, packed down with a little piece, probably about an inch of uh, this tampon squeezed in there. Close this down. Okay, and you'd probably want to do this, you know, in the upright position, um, keeping pressure. And as you can see, Wow, it's, it's almost perfect. I'm gonna have to cut it a little bit shorter, um, maybe another 16th of an inch, just so I get a complete well, seal. Um, for now, I have the cotton in here. Uh, it's, you know, the humidity is very low in New York, but when humidity gets higher, I'm definitely gonna move over to that molecular sieve. It's a 13X molecular sieve. I'll put a link for that as well. Uh, that I found on Amazon. You can find this anywhere. They're, they're, it's available everywhere and it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, you could use it a few times, uh, maybe two or three fills and then swap it out. So this is relatively easy to take apart. So the reason we're talking about this is safety. Safety is paramount. Uh, I wanna be safe. I want you guys to be safe. I'm trying to disseminate whatever I learn. I'm new to the whole high pressure system. Uh, water in these tanks or in any tanks in your gun uh, obviously can create corrosion uh, and possibly as they say explosion or rupture um, it is absolutely dangerous I've seen some videos on what happens if a full tank 4,500 pounds uh, of pressure ex well ruptures and the tank goes flying because it does not explode you, you you're not going to see shrapnel everywhere um, unless a piece like the top comes off and shears off uh, for the most part the tank will will rupture at that point where whatever if it's if it's been hit or if it opened up and then the tank will go flying about and it's very very dangerous um, so that was a big concern right so i went to a local scuba shop and asked about this issue of having water in my tank I was getting it filled at the scuba shop, and I know they're using dry uh, air. I saw that he brought me back there and showed me the whole system. It's a very, very complex system. Uh, big ass uh, compressor, probably the size of this table, even bigger, uh, with three or four of these aluminum tubes, much, much larger, about probably three or four times this length and, uh, and quite a bit more circumference. Uh, but as far as the water in the tank and talking to the scuba guy, I was really concerned that I don't know the history of this. I bought this tank used, and I don't know the history of this tank. Uh, I know it's passed the hydro test, uh, which when I bought it, any tank I buy, I don't care if it has a hydro test, I'm going to redo the hydro test because you don't know how they treated it. Uh, but one thing we all can do to be safe, uh, if you're concerned about using these young hang compressors that you know, might be getting water into your system is, or into your tank, is to have your tank inspected. So in talking to my scuba guy, he said, look, what we can do is every six months, every year, whatever you want, as often as you'd like, uh, for 10 bucks, we'll open it, you know, let all the air out, open it up and send a camera inside and visually inspect it to see if there's any rust splattering or uh, aluminum doesn't rust, it pits. Um, you might see a little bit of rust in there um, from the components, but you'll really see the pitting. Uh, is it droplets or is it splattered? Um, they can determine if there's any issues with these tanks. So my recommendation to anyone using an Omega, uh, a, what's the other one, uh, Air Venturi, uh, Young Hang, uh, Car Carteret, Carteret, uh, Carteret, I think it's called, whatever pump you're using at home, you still wanna have your tanks inspected visually by a scuba shop once a year, at least. That, that would be my recommendation. Um, and at least you could feel safe about it and then do your five-year hydro test and you're being as safe as you can. I do not recommend filling directly into your guns um, unless you have a really, really good molecular sieve filter, uh, whether you hack it or you buy the alpha or whatever else you use. 
uh, but I think it, never fill your gun. You know, fill the tanks. Uh, make sure dry air is getting into our tanks. If there, if it's not completely dry, uh, according to my scuba guy, he said you don't have to fear. These tanks are made very well, but get them inspected as often as every year, and you can catch an issue before it sneaks up on you and uh, hurts you. So. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this. Uh, I've had this just hydro tested a few months ago. Uh, but come April, I am going to have a visual inspection done on this tank. Uh, and I'll have the hydro test in five years when it's due. But every year, have that visual inspection. And you at least can feel safe if your scuba shop guy tells you that the tank looks great inside, there's no signs of pitting, rusting, or water, then you're good to go. If you start to get signs of water or pitting, then you know either your system's not working, uh, water's getting in there somehow, and you need to address that. So the information I received regarding the molecular sieve was from one of the viewers on the first uh, video I did for the young hand compressor. And many people were chiming in saying, yeah, me too, that's the way I do it. Uh, I have a second stage. You know, this is your little first stage for the dirt and oil, not for the water. And then you have a second stage for the water and oil. Uh, right now, again, I'm using these cotton things. Uh, in this low humidity environment and for short runs, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I am not getting any water in my tanks. Um, I'm gonna change over, like I said, to the molecule. So anyone out there who's gonna start screaming and yelling about, you know, the cotton's not gonna cut it, I got it. We understand that. Cotton's not gonna cut it. Hopefully this helps in addressing the issue of water and the danger of explosions uh, that could happen, as people have indicated about with these tanks. Um, again, this is high pressure air. It is dangerous no matter how you look at it. Um, as you, I don't know if you're gonna see in a moment, I'm gonna play the video as to how I have filled this up today. Um, I kind of, I'm very uh, cautious and you should be too when you're using high pressure air. You don't know if these cables uh, are gonna snap, you know, come apart at some point. Uh, again, this stuff can go flying and at, at supersonic speeds. So I stood behind the refrigerator, as you'll see in the video, and that's my safety. I was using this particular uh, uh, water and oil separator and uh, I don't trust anything. I don't care if it's made in China. I don't care if it's made in the U.S. I would probably feel better if it was made in the U.S. Uh, but unfortunately it seems like everything is made in China. Um, uh, but I've been trying to be very safe when I'm using this and I know a lot of people are using these and I purchased it because I saw a bunch of reviews and uh, a lot of individuals said that this is a very well made uh, pump, again for $350, $400 depending where and when you got it. Uh, it sure beats the hell out of spending uh, $1,500 or $1,400. I think actually the uh, uh, the Air Venturi now is $1,300. It's falling in price and it's probably falling in price because of competition. Um, so when you have a $350 competitor that's uh, you know providing the same kind of service uh, as long as no one gets hurt, it's, it's a valid competitor. And unfortunately, well, fortunately for all of us air gunners, um, probably competition is good. 
it creates a, a more affordable product, a better product, and um, hopefully that's what Young Hang will do, and hopefully nobody will get hurt from so. Like I said, when I use this, I'm behind a refrigerator. Um, distance is your friend, as someone had mentioned in one of the videos. Uh, you know, you want to be as far away from this as possible. I kind of peek over, look at it, make sure, you know, the pressure is okay. I look at the tank, uh, but I don't stand too close to it. I've seen, uh, like George Sprave um, with his safety t-shirt, what a funny guy. Um, he'll stand there, fill up a gun, and he'll kind of like be leaning right on it with his face next to it. Um, not me. Uh, my suggestion is, you know, and that was a good suggestion from one of uh, the viewers, uh, stay as far as you can while filling um, and monitor it. You know, look at it, be around it, but don't be too close that if something goes wrong, at least you have some distance between you and the whipping hose. I mean, this hose is about uh, two feet. If, the, you know, try to maintain three feet of distance. You, you know, if something goes wrong, you'll avoid getting hurt. Same thing with this. I mean, when you think of the whole distance here, you might have about three feet, four feet. Um, maintain that distance. Uh, put it behind something, a wall. Uh, uh, something that uh, if something goes wrong, you're safe, uh, or at least somewhat safe. Uh, you know, take some precautions. Um, but anyway, I think that's enough on the on the issue of safety. I really wanted to address that. Uh, the water in the tanks, um, these cables, anything that could go wrong. This is high pressure air. Uh, we all take you're taking a risk anytime you're working around this. Um, I'm trying to take as as much of a calculated risk as possible. Uh, at the same time, somebody said. Uh, cheap and 4,500 pounds don't go together. That's probably true, but cheap and inexpensive aren't the same thing. This is an inexpensive pump. I don't believe it's a cheaply made pump, so there's a difference. Um, if they're using some kind of crappy component, yeah, that would make it cheap or cheaply made. This is an inexpensive component, and my sus I might suspect that someone who said that might be in the business and might be concerned about how this affects their business. Well, sorry, but competition is good. And um, it makes better products. It lowers the price for everyone. And um, that's what it is. I also read from one of my other viewers from the other video that uh, this Young Hang compressor has been certified safe by the UK. Now, I don't know if that's true. Um, I haven't really spent the time to look if anyone out there can verify that, that these young hang compressors uh, are safe, have been certified for use or safe use in the UK. That's actually awesome. I hope that is true uh, because that makes me feel a little bit better. I mean, we're importing these things from China and, you know, I don't see any UL listing or anything like that that says, you know, this has been tested by uh, UL or someone else in the United States for safety. Uh, all the comments, I got some great comments like from uh, uh, Hunt Chunky One. Uh, this was an individual who uh, watched one of my other videos and he commented because I wasn't really sure what everything did or how it fully worked, but I have a much better understanding now. Um, so what I want to do is just take you through the process one more time uh, and explain to you why it's important to use this valve on this side here. This is the bleeder valve and this is a super, super important valve. Um, we're going to crack this open every five or ten minutes, and that's what I've been doing. And it's been letting out air and a little bit of oil as well. I, and again, I'm not sure if oil is seeping from the, the crankshaft up, um, but somehow there's oil and water. I don't know if it's just maybe what's residue left over from manufacturing. Um, the other thing is, by the way, uh, safety. Someone talked about using 5W30 oil here. Uh, I don't recommend it. Stick with the hydraulic oil. It's anti-corrosion. It's meant for high compression. I think if you compress motor oil to a certain level, if it gets compressed, it's going to explode. So stick with the hydraulic oil. For, you know, I don't know if you're trying to save a few pennies, but that's not worth it. Just use the hydraulic oil. It's very cheap. Pet Boys has it. Uh, number 46, anti-corrosion uh, hydraulic oil. Um, it's working fine for me. Uh, one more thing uh, before we go on to just show you how you know to use it really quickly. My... Uh, unit here actually failed and burned. Not the unit itself, but something called the power relay. And this is what controls how the shutoff works, the power works, the alarm works. Um, it happened to burn. And I, I thought, oh boy, here we go, cheap product. But I was able to purchase a replacement. Uh, this particular power relay 
is from Binder, and it has a number on it, BR302. Uh, it goes on and on. I'll, I'll, I'll post it. But anyway, I replaced it with something I bought on eBay for $7.50. It's working, uh, but the shutoff doesn't work. So something was different about that power relay. So someone uh, on Gateway to Air Guns was nice enough to help me uh, find the part on AliExpress. And you can find that too. I mean, again, all these parts, the great thing about this compressor, you can find parts everywhere. The cotton, tampons, the big one, the upper part here, the upper housing, uh, the relay, uh, you name it. You could have, you, there's all parts all over AliExpress and eBay uh, for this compressor. So I've also gotten a few questions on clarifying uh, at what point, you know, do you crack open or close the valves, um, you know, so to protect the, the, the cylinder, the piston, the motor, you know, uh, longevity, to have this thing work for a, a long time. Uh, Hunt so Junkie uh, put in my last video uh, a good practice uh, for starting up and shutting down um, these compressors. And uh, thank you, Hunt Junkie <laughs> 1, Hunt Junkie 1. Um, so his process and many other individuals had mentioned the best way to do this is to start with the, bleed, the water bleed valve open and the, bleed, the regular bleed valve, the high pressure bleed valve open. Um, this side, have it all connected. So you have your uh, compressor with the cotton uh, oil, no, I'll we'll call it the dirt cotton swab in here, connected to your second stage, which would have your, your uh, micro sieve, uh, your molecular sieve in here. Uh, for now, I have cotton swabs. I'm going to swap that out and put some molecular sieve and put it, encase it in a uh, plastic uh, encasement and pack it in nice and tight um, so it does its job, and then have that connected to the tank. Now, right now, the tank is off, the compressor is off, Everything is connected. The bleed valves, both of these, are open right now, okay? So what you'll do is don't open the tank yet. There's no pressure in the system. Start your uh, compressor, as I just did now. That click, I started the compressor. It's running. Now let, the, let it start a little bit. This way the, the piston gets a chance to run up and down, warm up a little bit. You know, just kind of no pressure against it. Actually, you don't have to have it warm up. Just have it get moving. Then you can close down the two bleed valves, okay? This, this one here, this is my own, if you recall from the last video, this is my own little bleed valve uh, right over here. It's just a second bleed valve just in case something happens that I can't get to it over here. Um, keep that all down. So the machine is building up pressure. Don't open your tank yet. So watch, watch your gauge. Let it get up to like two, let it equalize to what's in your tank. And usually most of us will fill up at around 2,800, 3,000, when your tank reaches 3,000. So when the gauge starts to read around 2,500, start to slowly crack open your tank, okay? And that will equalize the pressure. You might see this come up a little bit. Just slowly and, you know, give it a turn, half turn, half turn. And eventually, you know, you'll have it almost all the way open, and that will fill. So during the process, during the fill, you'll want to crack the water bleed valve every five, 10 minutes and let that water out. That will also aid in not getting water into your system, okay? Um, again, if you're running it for 20 minutes, crack it three times. If you're running it for half an hour, crack it four times, you know, um, whatever you can. As, I'm sure it's not bad to crack it open every five minutes. Um, and that will help to reduce the amount of water that's going through your system, at least through when this When it's all done, the way I do it is, unfortunately, the machine will shut off on its own when it reaches its pressure. So I don't have a chance to open the bleed valve and then close everything. And one of my concerns, and maybe someone else can address this, is if you release the pressure while it's still running, you haven't shut the, the, the compressor off, and opening the bleed valve, and then come here and close the tank valve, you're going to lose some air in that, in that transition phase. Um, maybe that's true, maybe that's okay. What I've been doing is the machine shuts off automatically. I first close the tank to conserve my air and then quickly come over as quick as I can and bleed out the air from the system. Um, again, 
I've been told that it's better to first bleed the system before closing your tank. Okay, so bleed the system, shut it off, close your tank. Now, if you think of that process for a minute, maybe I've got something I'm not thinking about. If you start bleeding the system, close the, the compressor, the minute you turn that bleed valve, air is rushing out, you have to quickly get to that tank and shut it down before you lose too much air. Now, in, I mean, I don't know how much air you're gonna lose, you know, maybe 100 PSI at most, maybe, I don't know, something to that effect. So, uh, again, um, I'm not 100% clear as to what is the best way to shut down the system, but again, what I've been told and what I'll tell you is first open the bleed valve, shut off your compressor, then close your tank. To me, it almost seems a little bit counterintuitive because uh, you kind of don't want to lose the air through the system as you bleed. So I'll first close my tank, shut off, you know, I, this will be, sh the compressor will be shut first. As soon as the compressor shuts down, close my tank, then bleed the system, okay? Because it already stopped. The automatic shutoff has stopped the compressor. So I have no way to bleed before, so unless I don't use the automatic shutoff. Uh, but then I'm kind of losing that feature. And that was the whole point too is, you know, so I don't have to kind of be very close to the machine at, at every minute. Um, I just kind of glance at it every few minutes and make sure, you know, everything's working well. Uh, I want to be as far from the system as possible. So, and the automatic shutoff does its job. It's really good. Uh, if you put 4,300, it shuts off at 4,300. Um, so again, that is the process. Um, I'm sure there'll be some comments that will, that will uh, state the proper way to do that. And whichever one makes the most sense, I'll pin it. Uh, but at this point, uh, I haven't had any problem. I've, I've used this probably about 30 times now, and it's still running flawlessly.